the website. Yes. Okay. Here, I'm just gonna go on the other it's side. It's recording. Of it. It's recording. Okay. It's okay. We can just edit. Okay. So today is November fifth, two thousand and fifteen. I'm Danielle, and I'm here with Miss Ruth. How would you pronounce Block. it? Block. Block. Okay. Thank you very much, Miss Ruth Block. Thank you. You're um welcome. So would you like to tell me, like, date of like where you were born and when? I was born in Zagreb, Croatia. Can, Can you, you spell want the that? date? Yes, I yeah. have no problem <laughs> with it. May 24th, 1937. Um, so did you live with your parents or yes. in like a small town or anything? What yes. was it like? Um, I was born in Zagreb, but we lived in a small town called Glina. Uh, the reason I was born in Zagreb is because they didn't have any big hospitals in Galena. That's how small the town is. And my mother made up an album. This is the beginning of my life. So, this is when I was born <laughs> with my brother. How, old, how much older is your brother than you are? My brother was four years older than I was. Did you have any other siblings? No. There's it was the just okay. the two of us. And there is a picture of the two of us. I keep mm -hmm. that picture by my computer <laughs> because he was a computer tech Yeah. and mm -hmm. started in the 50s, so I feel like he's teaching me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's really nice. Yeah. Okay, would you like to tell me about like what your life was like with your brother growing up? Um, well, I, he was not a good kid. Oh, no. <laughs> he was, um, my mother always seemed to have a lot of trouble with him, but growing up, we were, we were in, in a town mm -hmm. that was small, but my father had a, um, uh, it was like a de small department store, and we lived very well. We were very comfortable. Um, did your mother have an occupation, or? No, my mother yeah. was. Actually, she worked in the business with my father. You know, uh, you have to remember this. Mm -hmm. My parents were the Holocaust survivors. I was the child mm -hmm. of a Holocaust survivor. When all this happened, mm -hmm. I was about six years old, five years old. So my memory mm -hmm. is quite not as sharp as my mother would yeah. have been. She never wanted to talk about it. We mm -hmm. tried to get it, yeah. you know, all the information out of her and it was tough. Yeah. She didn't talk about it much at all? No, mm -hmm. no. Even on... At her 90th birthday, mm -hmm. uh, my daughter and son-in-law tried to get her, they put a recorder in front of her. Mm -hmm. Nothing came out, mm -hmm. nothing. Uh, of all of us, I would say she was the most traumatized. Yeah. Um, but she, her middle name was Survivor, and she was able, once we, got out of there and went through everything. She was able to put all that behind her mm -hmm. and never want to talk about it. She was a survivor and we had a wonderful life mm -hmm. afterwards, believe it or not, yeah. as hard as it might sound. All right, so you said you were, you were six? I was five, six, okay. yes. Okay. Um, so, do you, you don't remember much of any? Well, we were jailed oh. um, in that piece of paper that I gave you. It's my whole yeah. history. Everything exactly as it happened. Yeah. Uh, we were jailed by the Nazi sympathizers. They mm -hmm. came and got us. Um, I have one picture in my mind that I never forgot, yeah. and that was my grandmother sitting in the corner. We were all thrown into this one big room, mm -hmm. and she was sitting in the corner on a barrel. Mm -hmm. And our maid used to come and 
bring ice cream and put it through the window for us, for my brother and I. I have, that is the one memory that I have. And the escape itself, from what I was told, it was an uncle of mine, uh, my father's sister married a Catholic man. So he was not jailed with us. And he managed to get Nazi uniforms, forged papers, yeah. and came and got us out. Wow. And we were put on a last fishing boat mm -hmm. to, and we ended up like in the mountains between Italy and Yugoslavia. And we were sort of kept safe by the partisans. Do you, do you have any recollection or were you told of what age you guys were jailed? About five, six. Oh, wow. um, how long were you guys there for? I couldn't tell you yeah. that part of it. I have no clue. I don't know the name of the jail. I know that there were two jails mm -hmm. in Galena, mm -hmm. but I don't know which one okay. it was. And I have no recollection of how long we were in there. Mm -hmm. Um, but we ended up in Italy after we, we were put on a ship by the partisans mm -hmm. and once the war was over we ended up in Italy in Taranto which is the lower booth yeah. uh, like the, the lower yeah. booth of Italy yeah. as I call it yeah. and then we ended up in Milan and as I said, my mother was amazing. We had a wonderful life in Italy. Mm -hmm. And she was able to put all that behind her. Did you tell me about your life in Italy? Like, it was wonderful. Yeah. It was wonderful. We <laughs> traveled all over. Yeah. We went to Rome. We went to Venice. Um, I went to school. I actually, before I went to school, I was tutored by a teacher or whatever she was, privately. And we were all different ages. And school was horrible for me for the rest of my life. Yeah. Because I actually missed first, second, third, and fourth grade. If you don't have those yeah. fundamental, the basics, Forget it. Was that when you were like traveling? In Italy. Mm -hmm. This okay. was when we were, well, yes, because like I said, there were years that I missed, which we were on the border of Italy and Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. And by the time I got to Italy, I couldn't tell you how old I was. Um, these were all from Yugoslavia, and I'll show you. Once we got to Italy, I was here, mm -hmm. probably seven, eight years old, nine years old. Yeah. This was in school, which I hated. <laughs> I despised school, yeah. because from Yugoslavia, I had to learn how to speak Italian, and and then from Italian, English. Can I ask you a question about um, who, like, arrested or made they you guys were go to jail? Nazi sympathizers, and okay. they were called Ustashi. Okay. Could you spell that? U S T A S H I. Ustashi. Thank you. They were the Nazi. They were actually Yugoslavian. You know, just like you have ISIS today, you have American people that are joining ISIS because they think they're going to have a better life. Yeah. Yugoslavian people did the same thing. They joined the Germans, our own people. Yeah. Went against us. 
for a better life, thinking that it would be a better life. So my mother, my brother and I, and my father were the only ones that were able to escape. My mother lost 33 members of her family. Four brothers and her father were put in a camp called Yesenovats. Do you know much about what happened to them in the camp? Or well, it's there? here. Okay. And I just, that's what this is all about, yeah. how to translate it. Okay. Um, I befriended a, uh, a college professor from Garrett yeah. College. She knew about this book, and last September she said to me, I have a Croatian student attending Garrett College. Mm -hmm. Would you like her to translate it? It took her close to a year to do it. Wow. And I sent a translation to my grandchildren, mm -hmm. and one of my grandsons, who's 25, he read it and he said to me, Grandma, I don't want you to read it. Mm -hmm. It is horrendous. And I never did. Mm -hmm. My mother never wanted to know what was in the book because it was her father. Right. Two of the uncles escaped. Okay. This is the one uncle that wrote it. Mm -hmm. And the other one, Uncle Leo, mm -hmm. came to the United States with us. Agon stayed in Yugoslavia and I'm in touch with his daughter and his grandchildren. There's, they stayed, they're still there. Yeah. And uh, this, this was amazing mm -hmm. because it really brought out our whole route, how we escaped, where we went afterwards, which is all and that, which I never really knew, because at the book is more for my two cousins. Mm -hmm. Uncle Leo had two boys. One lives in New York on Long Island, the other one in Florida. And the story is basically about Leo and mm -hmm. Egon and everything that they went through in this. The book was used a couple of years ago in court in Yugoslavia to bring some of these Nazi sympathizers mm. and put them behind bars. Um, I just looked down and I realized, um, what was your, did you change your name? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, we were sponsored by a cousin of my mother's to the United States. Okay. I've told, I can tell you, we discovered America before Columbus did. <laughs> we came October 11, 1949, and this cousin suggested that we change our last name from Cohn, mm -hmm. K-O-H-N, to Colton, C-O-L-T-E-N. My brother's name was Branko Cohen, mm -hmm. and he was told that he could never get a job here with that name, so they changed it to Robert Colton. And mine, of course, was changed from Ruth Cohen to Ruth Colton. So you, I heard that you, when did you come from Italy, or when did you go from Italy from to Italy the to the United States, yeah. week, October 11, 1949. Yeah. What was that like? Uh, we came on a ship, mm -hmm. uh, which was a wonderful experience, especially, you know, a kid of 12 years old mm -hmm. on a ship for the first time. Probably pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was. And I, I was a very outgoing kid, and I made friends with some people in first class, and they let me use the pool <laughs> in first class. Um, coming over was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I still remember entering New York. 
Um, they let us go through while my parents did all the paperwork. And um, this cousin got us a an apartment in Manhattan. I still remember where it is. And we lived there till we bought a house in Forest Hills, Queens. I even have a picture of that house because my daughter just recently was there and okay somewhere in here is a picture it was a duplex we lived upstairs and my cousin lived downstairs with his parents yeah did um did your father and mother get new like start a new life like at jobs like yes into a house and yes of course my mother did a very smart thing mm -hmm. she hired a tutor mm -hmm. and didn't just sit in a room and teach her how to speak english she took her around new york mm -hmm. and by pointing things and trap and going around mm -hmm. sightseeing that's how my mother learned how to speak my father had a tougher time with it mm -hmm. Uh, he was a much quieter man. My mother would, I would have to say, she was the strength behind him and all of us. She, she's the one that we can thank for being here. And I never understood, because she was a little on the cold side, mm -hmm. um, not just very harsh, very overprotective. And I think it was only after she passed away that I understood what it was all about. Life made her that way, and that's how she survived. So you grew up from the age of 12 until now you've been living in the U.S. Where? Yes, where did your life we take lived you in New here? York, and I met my husband in New York. Um, I had a few bad experiences mm -hmm. when we first came to yeah. to the United States because I couldn't speak the language. Uh, after this tutor, my mother sent me off to school. I still couldn't speak English, and one day I had to go to the bathroom really bad. I went up to the teacher. I didn't know how to say it. She ushered me back to the seat. I went back up again. She sent me back again. I didn't know how to ask. I finally made in my pants at the seat, and it was horrible. It was a co-ed class. And it was horrible. I went home lunchtime, and I cried, and I said, Mom, I'm not going back to school. She said, you're going back. <laughs> but soon after that, we moved to Forest Hills, Queens, which I was thrilled to death. <laughs> then my mother did one other thing when we first came. We came in October, and the following June, July, mm -hmm. She sent me off to sleepaway camp for two months. My brother and I, my brother was a waiter and I was a camper. And again, I could hardly speak English. The other worst thing was this cousin of my mother's had a daughter that was my counselor. So everybody made fun of me that I brought my own babysitter with me. Mm -hmm. And I was bullied something terrible. Mm -hmm. Well, as determined as I was, I went back home. I learned how to speak English, and I told my mother, I want to go back. She thought I was crazy. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going back. And I made friends out of every single one of those kids. Yes. And I, I was just, I was a fighter. Yeah. And I think that, you know, what we all went through mm -hmm. made me that way. Uh, 
So you said you did you married your husband? Yeah. <laughs> and five grandchildren. Unfortunately, the marriage was not a good marriage. Mm -hmm. I was only 19 when I met him. Mm -hmm. Here I came over, I was 12. What did I know? Mm -hmm. right. uh, I was young, he was young. I think I fell in love more with the looks. Yeah. <laughs> and here. I just happened to find. Oh, okay. Now, do you understand what I'm yeah. talking about? Mm. Yeah. Those are a great looking couple. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But he was, and this is the strange thing, mm -hmm. and there is a lot of truth to it. They tell you you marry either your mother or your father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I marry my mother. <laughs> And he was very controlling. Yeah. And I was, I never spoke up to him. Yeah. And it was a tough, tough marriage. Not in the beginning. And then he got a job here in Baltimore and we had to move. Mm -hmm. Here I am, I had just had my second daughter. Mm -hmm. She was four months old. My oldest one, Heidi, was two and a half, three. And here I am in Baltimore with two small children, didn't know how to drive. Yeah. Baltimore, if you don't know how to drive, you're lost. Yeah. Now I'm gonna tell you something. You can either leave it in mm -hmm. or you can take it out. It's up to you but it has a lot to do with what happened to me as a child. Mm -hmm. When we came to Baltimore, he had picked out the apartment that we were gonna live in mm -hmm. prior to me coming here because I was pregnant. And it was very isolated, there was nothing around. It was just an apartment house with a pool mm -hmm. and I wasn't driving. Um, I don't know how soon after we got here, I had a complete nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. I thought that I was in concentration camp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was in therapy for 10 years. But it's probably the best thing that could have happened to me because it made me even stronger. Uh, I learned what I was all about, mm -hmm. who I was. Um, it was very tough in the beginning. Uh, the children were sent back up to New York for a month because that's how long I was in the hospital uh, with my mother-in-law. And. After that, like I said, I was in therapy for 10 years. As I said, you can leave it in, but it is a big part mm -hmm. of what happened. Mm -hmm. Because in those days, they didn't know about therapists. Mm -hmm. All We all went through a trauma, yeah. as did my brother. Mm -hmm. My brother handled it differently. He started with alcohol, mm -hmm. drugs. Uh, his wife left him. He couldn't handle it. It was horrible. Uh, rejection was probably the worst part for both of us. And in 1994 is when I separated from my husband. He wanted out. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I cried for five years. But again, through therapy, seeing, you know, a divorce group, I again came out on the other side that much stronger. And I'm a very independent individual today. Mm -hmm. I don't think that today I would allow all those things mm -hmm. to happen. I have a much bigger mouth today than I ever did. 
Have you spoken to your brother? If he, does he My have a lot brother of passed away. Okay. They all did. Yeah. Unfortunately, we all got cancer. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it came from. Of course, we don't know whether it's the environment, whether it's genetic. Mm -hmm. My father died of um, Hodgkin's. Mm -hmm. He was 79. My brother died soon after from liver cancer. And with him, I believe it had to do with the alcohol mm -hmm. and the drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, and he died at 52, 1984. Mom is the one that lived the longest. Mm -hmm. Again, a fighter. She always wanted to live by the ocean, so she moved to Florida. She had a wonderful life down there. Mm -hmm. And she was just an amazing, amazing individual. This was her 90th birthday. She died soon after that. She looks young. She looks young. Yes. She looks very young. Yes. She looks so young. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Well, I have to tell you, being that she lived in Florida and I didn't see her all the time, I always said, I think she snuck a facelift on me. <laughs> because I don't know of anybody that looks like that at 90. Yeah, she looks good. Yeah, I mean, really. Just, well, she was a beautiful woman. I told you I had a lot of pictures. Yeah, you're wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. She's very beautiful. Yeah. But uh, tough. Yeah. Very tough. And again, like I said, I guess she had to be that way. Mm -hmm. Life made her that way. Losing, it's not easy losing 33 members mm -hmm. of your family. Plus her father, her mother. The mo Her mother, I never really found out. I don't think she was in the concentration camp. I don't know where she ended up. Mm -hmm. But the father died there and two of the brothers. Have you been able to speak to like anyone in your family about what it, like they think about it? Or like, do you guys not talk about it much? Well, what happened because of my breakdown, mm -hmm. which really was caused from the trauma as a child, my husband would never let me talk about it after that. Mm -hmm. um, I only started talking about it after we separated. And now I belong to the Holocaust Survivors Group here in Baltimore. I also mm -hmm. have recently been asked to join the committee at the Balma Jewish Council that gives money out to the Holocaust needy. Mm. There is a grant from Germany that comes in once a year for the needy. And the other thing, I'm in the social club mm -hmm. and I'm also on the committee to plan the socials. Oh, so I really have gotten very involved. Yeah. And that only happened after I stopped working, mm -hmm. which was when I was 74. I worked all the way yeah. till I was 74. What yes. was your job? Uh, well, my husband and I owned a sign company. As a matter of fact, they might have done some signs for Goucher. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, my daughter owns it now. I went to the separation group, the divorce group at um, at the Jewish Community Center and I met a man there who after listening to me for about eight months asked me to come to work for him. He owned a coffee service company uh, where you know you bring a coffee machine into an office and then you deliver the coffee mm -hmm. and I pretty much ran the whole office <laughs> because for 20 years working with my husband owning a business, I knew quite a bit. And he just 
gave me the reins. Not only because of that, but it, because he knew with my divorce that everything had been taken away from me. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and I ended up sell, selling him my house. So he lives in my house. You said that, were you able to like, you said you went to therapy, right? Did you like recall any memories there of like what it was like when you were younger? In the therapy, a lot came out about my mother and my husband and the similarities. Okay. Um, it was more, okay. you know, Yeah. it's hard to explain it, you know, and of course, who can remember that yeah. it was not a great time for me. Yeah. I think that possibly the divorce was worse than anything else that I had been through my life. Uh, again, the rejection. Mm -hmm. um, both my brother and I mm -hmm. really had a problem with that. But I, being a very strong person, never resolved to liquor, never resolved mm -hmm. to drugs. I just went full throttle forward and did what I had to do. And being raised European, mm -hmm. the old fashioned way, my husband took care of everything. Mm -hmm. The finances, everything. So I had to learn how to do all that. Mm -hmm. And I love being in charge and in control. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's a very good feeling. Yeah. Um, do you know what camps, if any of your family were in camps or? Well, yes. Yeah. This is was the that, camp. Yeah. Was everyone this there? This is no. Okay. Um, I don't know how the other members mm -hmm. of the family died because they never talked yeah. about it. Uh, but this Yasenovats is where my mother's father and the four brothers ended up. And then you said that you and your mother just went to the jail? With well, we were jailed yeah. by the Nazi sympathizers. My mother, my father, my brother, my grandmother, and my aunt. Okay. My father's sister. Okay. That was after your father got out of the camp, or before? No, I mean, we didn't yeah. get out until yeah. my uncle came mm -hmm. and got us. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like there's anything else you would like to share with me about your experience? Um, I don't know, but you can pretty much get a yeah. lot out of that. Um, I had a very good friend when I moved to Baltimore, mm -hmm. also a Holocaust survivor, mm -hmm. Leah Bretholtz, and he wrote a book called Leap into Darkness. Oh, we we learned literally about learned about class. him today in class. Yeah. You're kidding. Yeah, we like had our homework reading on him well, and we were him talking and about I him all. We were class. very good friends. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. That's really awesome. And it was because of Leo mm -hmm. that I met Beth Lors, mm -hmm. who is a professor at Garrett College, yeah. who also teaches the Holocaust there. Yeah. And her and I became very good friends. And when I told that you ladies were coming to interview me, she was very excited mm -hmm. because she said, Ruth, I would very much like to bring my students up to Baltimore and have you talk to them. I have also been asked to do go around schools and mm -hmm. talk. I don't have any desire for yeah. it Be, for several reasons. Rehashing it yeah. Yeah. over and over, that's number one. And number two, being that I'm not the adult Holocaust survivor, mm -hmm. right. my memories are not like my mother and father. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of holes. Yeah. yeah. It's a tremendous amount of holes and you know, in yeah. in, in my story. 
Have the pictures helped you like put some of those, fill some of those holes? Yes, and the book did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This book, this book actually gave me, by talking to my cousin Danny, mm -hmm. gave me the route as to how we proceeded once we escaped yeah. through Italy and then on that fishing boat and, you know, how we got to the United States. What's the name of the book? 44 Months in Yasenovats. Yasenovats is spelled J-A-C-E-N-O. B A C. It was a concentration camp in Yugoslavia. You can look it up. It's all over Google. As a matter of fact, if you look up my uncle's name, Egon Berger, you will see. Yeah, this was when we got engaged. This is my first daughter. She's, yeah. And yeah, we took them to Florida. Do you remember having any friends when you were younger in Yugoslavia? Oh, yes. I left a very good friend behind, Rita. Rita yeah. Finzi. In Italy, they were also mm -hmm. Yugoslavian. They came over to Italy with us. And I was very sad the day that we left. And we kept writing mm -hmm. all those years. I wrote and she studied English so she actually couldn't write to me in English because my Italian as the longer I stayed here the more I forgot because I didn't use it mm -hmm. but I can speak Yugoslavian fluently because I spoke with my mother till the day she died so but Italian maybe if I had a bottle of Chianti it would come back <laughs> Yeah, this this was the whole family, the wedding. My grandmother, this is the uncle that saved us. Oh, okay. Yes, and that was his wife, my father's sister. This was my brother. And it was Leo, the uncle that saved you? It was Zvonko. Oh. Z-V... O N K O. How was he able to like safely get? Did he come and actually like physically come and save you? Yes, How he he to... he stole some Nazi uniforms. He did. Yeah. Wow. And he forged papers. Him and a friend of his. Mm -hmm. Like I said, he wasn't Jewish, so he wasn't okay. thrown into jail with us. Yeah, but here, this was while we were in Italy. Mm -hmm. This was in Taranto. This was or Switzerland when we went on vacations. We traveled yeah. everywhere. There are pictures here when we were in Venice. As I said, my mother, this in Italy, Mm -hmm. January 9th is a holiday after Christmas called La Befana. Mm -hmm. And you dress, you know, we, you go masquerade. Yeah. yeah. You have a lot of happy memories. I have a lot. It, it, as, as I said, my mother was a survivor. Yeah. Yeah, this was right after we came. You can see the faces, yeah. the expressions. Mm -hmm. This was on the boat coming over with my two cousins, my two first cousins, who of course now are in their 60s. Mm -hmm. Did you make a lot of friends when you moved to Italy? Uh, not really. I was always very cautious mm -hmm. about making friends. I uh, even now, till this day, um, and I think that has a lot to do with everything that I went through, the bullying. Um, I'm very picky about 
who I befriend, mm -hmm. being separation from my husband. Trust was very hard for me. This is something they do in Europe. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they take pictures without your clothes on. They love to do that. <laughs> Yeah, this we used to go for the summer to Hvar. It's called H V A R. That was where we spent yes. our summers. Where is that in Italy? In Yugoslavia. in Yugoslavia. This was still in Yugoslavia. Was, okay. You know, one of the things that Holocaust survivors did when that time came that you had to leave. The first thing that everybody grabbed were pictures. Yeah. I have a box here of pictures. When I brought my mother up from Florida because she took sick and I had to put her into Levendale, one day I took this box with me, laid out all the pictures in front of her and said, who are all these people? Mm. <laughs> By that point, she didn't know. Yeah. She not only, I think not only that she didn't know, it was memories mm -hmm. for her that I was bringing back, yeah. which she could never deal with it yeah. once we left, once we were out of there. What else did you guys bring with you, like, when you came? Nothing? Nothing. Just That's pictures. all they allowed us. What happened when we were let out of jail, mm -hmm. they allowed us to go back to our house mm -hmm. and pack one suitcase okay. each. As a matter of fact, my mother always told me this story. She took her diamond ring off, put it on a night table. Wherever we were, there was a Nazi sympathizer with us. By the time she turned around, the ring was gone. Years later, my parents were able to get money for the home and the business. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it was, Yugoslavia was still on the Tito's rule mm -hmm. when this happened. So they went back to Yugoslavia. They couldn't bring the money back. Mm -hmm. They had to spend it in Yugoslavia. And then when we got to New York, my mother asked my father to go after what's called Wiedergutmachen to get money from Germany and they hire a lawyer and they did get it not for us mm -hmm. for them yeah. they each received payments every month till the day they died i have now put in a request to uh, the claims conference mm -hmm. in new york because germany opened up to holocaust children of holocaust survivors and it's a one-time payment, it's not a big payment, but I figured this way, I'll take it. Yeah, mm -hmm. take it you can get it. Um, a lot of Holocaust survivors don't feel that way, they feel that it's dirty money. Right. Okay. Um, no, yeah. I feel it's owed to me. Mm -hmm. I lost schooling, and I really paid for that mm -hmm. because I was terrible in school. I hated going to school. Mm -hmm. It was tough, but did you do you remember ever? Did you ever go back to Yugoslavia? Did I ever have? Did you ever return back to Yugoslavia? Yes. Yeah. What was that? I like? have a, an album. My husband and I went back. Mm -hmm. um, in the seventies, we went back. We went back to Italy, and we went back to Yugoslavia. My uncle, Egon, was still alive. And unfortunately, what happened, it, our plane was supposed to leave from New York to Zagreb. And there was a problem with the plane, and we had to stay overnight in New York. And we lost one whole day in Zagreb. Mm -hmm. So my uncle came to the airport. He met us at the airport. and. We saw him when we came to Yugoslavia, and he again came on the way home. And that's, 
he did come to New York a couple of times. And when he came, he wasn't allowed to bring his wife because otherwise they were afraid that he wouldn't go back. Mm -hmm. So he had to come by himself. Why, why would he want to stay in the U.S. and not go back to? Oh, I would never want to go back to Yugoslavia. My life is here. Right. My life is here. I, I like to go back and visit. I don't have fond memories, mm -hmm. you know. And there is no place like the United States. I don't care where you are. <laughs> I don't care how much you're complaining about life here, there's no place like the United States. And I have lived in Italy, Yugoslavia, and I can tell you the difference. Mm -hmm. I have no desire to go back. Like I said, maybe for a visit. As a matter of fact, my younger daughter, it's their 30th wedding anniversary. She's talking about taking a cruise to Croatia this summer, and she said, Mom, you're coming along. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Do you want to share anything else with us about your, anything you remember? Not really. I think I yeah, was, pretty much yeah. covered it. I think, yeah. you know, once you get me going, I don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unless you have any other questions that I haven't covered? Um, no, actually, thank I you. Really, thank you very much. I blabbed really off. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was very, it was, thank you. It was very good to hear from you. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, I hope so. I hope it, you know, yeah. it can help you out with very your studies. So. Very much so. Appreciate what you have. That's all I can tell you. Every day. Okay. Every day. Okay. Yes. I appreciate everything I have now, even though it's not like it used to be when I was married. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I have one very important thing back, me. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. You can take that that I gave. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, You'll like get a lot it. out of that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and also my story went, it's a very strange place to put it, in a Holocaust survivor's cookbook. Which, really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, a woman here in Maryland started this project. Now, when this was done in 2004, mm -hmm. I did it very quickly. Page 100. And the story is different here than what it is now. This is my mother and these are all. And you had to give a recipe. Yeah. And then my cousin, and my mother's picture is on the front of the book, right here. Wow. That's this picture here. Not quite. No. Almost. She's probably around the same age. Um, maybe a little older. I think I saw the picture in here somewhere. Let's see. It's somewhere in here. Maybe here. Yeah, I even have, it's really interesting, their wedding picture with their announcement. I don't, wow. this is the picture. Oh, there it is. And that's her mother with my brother. <laughs> so cute. Yeah. And this was her parents. And then this is their wedding picture wow. with the announcement. Wow. So much memorabilia. Yeah. And th this is Great. my mother managed to. This is my birth certificate. Oh wow! She managed to save that. That's amazing. And this was. If you want to take this.